A solitary creature sits high atop a mountain peak. A massive frame with the head of a human, the body of a lion, and the wings of an eagle. This amalgamation speaks in enigmatic whispers, for it has long pondered the past, sees all moments of the present, and has gained portents of the future. A wealth of knowledge and wisdom lies within, but for one who seeks an audience with this great creature, access means answering life's most difficult riddle. These words conjure images of a pristine, mystical being that is near omnipotent, a creature that understands the ways of the past and has a roadmap to all foreseeable futures. One who speaks in clues to befuddle the mind and whispers dire warnings wrapped in unfathomable paradoxes. The Sphinx. Hey lore lovers, my name's Eric with the Lorebrarians YouTube channel, and welcome to the latest installment of our Study In series, highlighting a specific creature type within Magic the Gathering's vast multiverse. Today, we'll be taking a study in cunning as we seek to uncover the truth and dispel the mysteries surrounding perhaps the most puzzling creatures of all the planes, the Sphinxes. Along with Merfolk, Sphinx is the marquee creature type for blue mana, and nearly all of the 66 printed have blue in their casting cost. A Sphinx is a large and powerful creature, often composed of the body parts of many other beings. They're frequently depicted with a humanoid face, the muscular body of a large cat, and with feathered wings to carry them through the skies. A Sphinx is similar in appearance to a manticore, a creature predominantly born of red mana but their characteristics are starkly different. Sphinxes are masters of pontification and foresight. They frequently know how events will transpire long before they actually happen. A Sphinx is also an avaricious collector of knowledge and as such is a source of deep and mystical wisdom. Many have an innate ability for mental magic and they can often communicate telepathically or read the thoughts of those around them. But all of this knowledge, all of this understanding, is preciously hoarded, for a sphinx doesn't easily part with its discoveries and revelations. Often, humans and other races seek the wisdom of the sphinx, but it comes at a price. They must either answer a riddle of the sphinx's own making, or present a riddle it has not yet heard. If an individual fails, they're denied access to the creature's deep knowledge. But success is not straightforward, as a sphinx speaks in paradoxes and hides tiny kernels of truth bound layers deep in enigmatic prose. Sphinxes across the multiverse share many characteristics, but they also present with various differences. Their motivations, their purposes, and their level of interaction with other creatures of their native planes are all variable and we'll soon dive into the specific races of sphinxes across the multiverse. As with other videos in my Study In series, I want to preface this by saying that this is by no means an exhaustive list, where every sphinx printed is identified and meticulously dissected. Nor is this a video that explores stories, characters, and events in detail significant enough to warrant their own videos. Rather, I want this to act as a general guide to sphinxes, their presence in the multiverse, and their importance in the shaping of the planes. A reference point for you to seek out the finer details. But before we begin, if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, or if Magic the Gathering is dear to you, consider subscribing to the channel or checking out the podcast, where lore content is uploaded regularly. And if you'd like to help the channel further, check out my Patreon page where you can assist me in making content and earn some cool perks. The support is much appreciated. All right, time to scour the forbidden texts, confront the ancient riddles, and learn the deepest truths as we seek to understand sphinxes of Magic the Gathering. Let's dive in. Our exploration of the Sphinx begins not with a region or province, nor with a specific plane. Rather, it begins with a being one with immense power and the capacity to travel across the blind eternities. The ancient hieromancer and sphinx planeswalker Azor. 
Azur is thousands of years old, a sphinx that predates even the birth of many planes in the multiverse. He's a master law mage, a seeker of balance and justice, devoid of hubris or passionate judgment. Azor can be likened to the Ur-Dragon and fellow planeswalker Ugin the Spirit Dragon, who has seeded worlds with the creation of dragons. Azor has visited many planes on his travels and has either acted as progenitor for sphinxes found within them, or has greatly influenced the characteristics and behaviors of sphinxes already in existence. Similar to Ugin, whose maelstroms birthed dragons on the plain of Tarkir, Azor has created whole lineages of sphinxes across many planes. As such, the traits of many sphinxes in magic can be traced to the Hieromancer. He sees himself as a supreme judge, a lawbringer that rescues planes from the clutches of chaos and disorder. He reinvents civilizations and cultures, creating structured society that can survive tumultuous times rather than collapse in violent frenzies. In fact, many races tell of an ancient winged being, a godlike creature that arrives and saves people from themselves, one who acts with near omniscience and speaks in dire warnings. Indeed, the Sphinxes of many planes share Azor's love for balance, for order within reality, and for deep prognostication. On several worlds, a Sphinx is seen as an arbiter of order, a stoic herald speaking in riddles about past failures and future mistakes. Sphinxes often assume the role of taciturn mystic, a creature approached for guidance, but one that reveals knowledge reluctantly. Azor brought order to many planes of the multiverse, but was dogged by the threat of Nicol Bolas, an elder dragon planeswalker that more than once destroyed all the Sphinx had built. Azor worked closely with Bolas' brother Ugin to bring an end to the elder dragon, to trap him on the distant plane of Ixalan so he could never again bring harm upon the multiverse. The Sphinx sacrificed his own planeswalker spark to power the immortal sun, an artifact that prevented planeswalking, and awaited Ugin's order to activate it. But the spirit dragon never arrived, and the Sphinx, now lost of its spark, has been trapped on Ixalan ever since. He's known as the last guardian to the races of Ixalan, the enigmatic protector of the immortal sun and lost city of Araska. But despite having a physical presence on Ixalan, Azor's influence is perhaps strongest on the city plain of Ravnica. Here, the Sphinx drafted the Guild Pact to bring order to a world facing destruction and founded one of the ten guilds of Ravnica, a guild that bears his name to this day. Ravnica, the plain-wide city of guilds, is home to myriad races and creatures, including the Sphinx. The Azorius are one of the ten guilds of Ravnica, responsible for its governance and the creation of Ravnican law. Azor, assuming the name Supreme Judge Azor I and bearing the mantle of founding Perrin, birthed the Azorius Senate and many of its Sphinxes. He drafted the original Guild Pact document, which bound the interactions between guilds in mystical law and brought an end to Ravnica's primordial age of barbarism, allowing it to develop into the complex and expansive cityscape of today. The Azorius are bureaucratic fanatics, indoctrinated to resort to litigation as a solution for every problem. The guild shares Azor's zeal for law and order, vision for a structured and rational society, and his color alignment of blue and white. The ideals of the Azorius correspond with a natural inclination towards order and enlightenment of the Sphinx. So many Ravnican Sphinxes can be found as members within the Senate. They hold various positions, but most often as intellectual leaders whose guidance is sought by other members. If we pull up the card, Jelen Sphinx, it depicts an aloof but present creature, a leader who's filled its role well. And the flavor text reads, Few among the Azorius have ever spoken with the Sphinxes, but all have felt their influence. 
Like many other sphinxes, those of the Azorius seldom interact with other creatures, sharing their knowledge discreetly. We hear of the sphinx's steadfastness to virtues and ideals, highlighted in the flavor text of another Azorius sphinx, the Sphinx of New Prov, which states, Azorius sphinxes are loyal to the precepts of the law, not to any particular guildmaster, even one of their own kind. They hold true to their convictions and stray not a step from the path before them. This flavor text hints at a prominent sphinx within Ravnican society. The guildmaster of the Azorius Senate, Esperia. Esperia acted as a spiritual successor to Azor himself and embodied many of his characteristics through her careful guidance of the Azorius. Like many other sphinxes on Ravnica, Esperia had the face of a cat-like human and the body of a lion with feathered wings. Her frame was enormous and quite domineering, and Esperia took her role as supreme judge to heart. She was devoted to her guild and, like the other Azorius sphinxes, believed law was the bulwark against chaos and disorder. She preferred solitude and acted quite aloof, often using legal interventions to subdue wrongdoers. But if the threat were great enough, she had been known to bring swift and forceful justice to those who subverted the law. As seen in the art of riot control, where Esperia uses her mastery of hieromancy to quell a growing riot. Although the Sphinx was petrified and killed by Vraska, acting as an agent of Nicol Bolas in the events leading to the War of the Spark, her vision for a better future lives on in the Sphinxes of the Azorius. But the Senate isn't the only place a Sphinx can be found on Ravnica. The underbelly of crime, misinformation, and subversion found within the guild of House Demir contrasts greatly with the lofty virtue of the Azorius. Yet the Demir employ many Sphinxes as their agents and spies. This shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. The nature of Ravnican Sphinxes is to gather knowledge, to hoard secrets, and to divine the future. These skills and preferences line up perfectly with House Demir, whose mission is to sabotage the other guilds of Ravnica. For a guild that relies on information as currency, a Sphinx can quickly find themselves very wealthy indeed. This sentiment is echoed in the flavor text of City Watch Sphinx, which reads, All those who trade in questions must answer to the Demir. Puzzling and taciturn, the Sphinxes of Ravnica often act as informants for the Demir, but just as easily can be their greatest adversaries. After all, a Sphinx doesn't easily part with the knowledge they've divined. In the flavor text of Cerulean Sphinx, Zedek, the old leader of House Demir, says this of them. About the Sphinx, I have mixed feelings. Their wisdom I crave, but their secrecy I can't tolerate. Some Sphinxes are members of the guildless and feel no strong duty to any of the guilds. They reside in isolated bell towers and keeps high above much of the city, whispering dire warnings to those with an ear out to listen. If we travel away from the sprawling cityscape of Ravnica, we come to the metallic, cold, and meticulously calculated shard of Esper on the plain of Alara. Each of Alara's five shards has been denied access to two of the five colors of mana. On Esper, the passionate emotions of red and the natural connections of green are both suppressed. What has resulted is a world predominantly aligned with blue mana that is at every stage planned, at every step designed to be perfect without flaw or weakness. Control and reason have snuffed out chaos and primal savagery, and the denizens of Esper are led in their pursuit of perfection by the hegemony of the Sphinxes. Under the tutelage of the enigmatic Sphinx, the plane has transformed into an authoritarian police state, where the wise and powerful control all aspects of life 
through the mageocracy. What sets Esper apart from the other shards is its presence of a filigree metal, an ether-infused alloy called Ethereum. The Sphinxes of Esper and the other races use Ethereum for most everything and even substitute their own imperfect flesh for the cold, symmetrical metal. One day, all of Esper will be made of Ethereum, but for now, only those with enough wealth and power can gain sufficient stockpiles of it. Since the Sphinxes of Esper are among the highest ranking leaders, they are made almost entirely of Ethereum. An interesting fact that sets the Sphinxes of Esper apart from other planes is that all of those printed are artifact creatures due to their infusion. Another characteristic that makes Esper's Sphinxes unique is their access to black mana. Although they have the strongest association with blue mana, a Sphinx often has mastery over whites and black as well. And it's their love for law and order, their pursuit of cold rationality, and their foundation in white and blue mana that have led some to postulate as to whether the Planeswalker Azor visited Esper and influenced their Sphinxes. They do indeed share many characteristics with the Perrin of Ravnica. But a Sphinx on Esper has a darker side. Their pursuit of power, of knowledge, and their desire to maintain the status they enjoy have led the Sphinxes of Esper down a sinister path of vanity and conceit. If we look into the flavor text of Onyx Goblet, the motivations of the Sphinx are laid bare. It states, the goblet was a gift from the Sphinx Goriel, who hoped humans and Vidalkin would eventually destroy each other to acquire it, leaving all of Esper to her own kind. It is, however, Goriel's own kind that rules Esper already. Sharun sits at the top as the Grand Hegemon and leader of Esper, along with other Sphinxes, on an unending quest of perpetual perfection made possible by the mystical Ethereum. Like many other sphinxes, those found on Esper enjoy riddles and speak in puzzling whispers, often to the detriment of the downtrodden in society. As the flavor text of Arcane Sanctum reads, we must rely on our own knowledge, not on the dogma of the seekers or the mutterings of the sphinxes. Each sphinx of Esper has a brilliantly ornate filigree mane beset with dazzling jewels. We can see an imitation of them in the Art of the Card Mask of Riddles. With the conflux of Alara and the merging of the shards, Esper Sphinxes led the Aether Sworn in conquest and conversion. We hear their strict stance on non-metallic outsiders in the flavor text of Magister Sphinx, which reads, These benighted worlds are thick with ignorance. I will educate them. They will listen or they will die but we see that they met great resistance in the armies of Bant, whose rocks, war monks, and other druids used nature magic to destroy the Sphinx's artificial modifications in the art and flavor text of filigree fracture. It's uncertain whether the hegemony will retain control of Esper with a convergence, or if the Sphinx's subjects will find new purpose in the other shards. Leaving behind the cold steel of Esper, we arrive on the hot desert sands of Amonkhet, a plane long ago conquered and corrupted by the Elder Dragon planeswalker Nicol Bolas. He destroyed the existing civilization, killing or mentally dominating its gods, and culling the population so that no adults were left alive. He did so to remake the plane in his own image, conferring onto himself the status of God Pharaoh a divine entity above all else on Amonkhet, and the symbol of holy worship for the devoted citizens of Nachtamun. Bolas met resistance in his ravaging, however, from the sphinxes of the plain. The mental prowess and impenetrable minds of Amonkhet's sphinx population was too great for even the elder dragon to corrupt, and they likely stood as the sole species that remembered what the plain had been. Since he couldn't dominate their will, 
Bolas placed a curse on the Sphinxes, preventing them from speaking so they could never tell of his devastation. Through the years, almost all of Amonkhet's denizens have forgotten their gruesome, bloody past, but not the Sphinxes. They remember what was taken from them. Most Sphinxes are solitary, choosing the life of stoicism in their silence. The people of Noctamun frequently seek the Sphinxes out to pry the arcane secrets from their unmoving lips, but to no avail. That is, until the second sun approached its spot between the god pharaoh's horns, signifying the return of Nicol Bolas and the recounting of hours. As the elder dragon alighted on the sands of Amonkhet, the curse he placed on the sphinxes was broken, and they once more could speak of the threat he presented, and inform the people what had happened decades ago at the hands of their god pharaoh. But all were caught in the stupor of their god's return the overwhelming splendor of Bolas, that no one heard their warnings. This is relayed to us in the flavor text of Ominous Sphinx, which states, The Sphinxes began to speak only after the second sun aligned. They whispered dire warnings, though no one listened. So the great city of Noctamun was utterly obliterated and Bolas's betrayal made complete in the hour of devastation. There is a second breed of sphinxes that lives on the plain, more distant and much more aggressive. The cryosphinxes are easily discernible from their cousins due to them having ram heads rather than human. They reside beyond the scouring sands of the broken lands and generally avoid the city of Noctamun, perhaps because it's a stronghold for Bolas where the citizens worship the sphinx's sworn enemy. Cryosphinxes haven't resorted to bearing their curse in resignation. They actively seek out and destroy agents of Bolas on the plain. The angels and demons that patrol the skies and any other creature that can be directly linked to the god pharaoh. The leader of the Cryosphinxes is called Unesh, and he was at the forefront in their attack on Bolas, fueled in his zeal by his hatred towards the god pharaoh. Despite being two distinct races, all of the sphinxes of Amonkhet are aligned with blue mana and blue mana only. They remember the days of the plane's ancient past, and that knowledge is represented in their color alignment. We leave now the harsh, dangerous sands of Amonkhet for the lush but equally unforgiving continents of Zendikar. Zendikar is a plane surging with primordial mana that drives both verdant growth and awesome destruction. The world has been ravaged by the interplanar abominations known as Eldrazi, as well as the naturally occurring phenomenon known as the Royal. Despite all this, Zendikar stands renewed and resurgent, with its powerful mana ley lines feeding the plane, nourishing it to grow unbridled. The plane is vast, with many different continents and ecosystems that support a wide array of beasts, monsters, and civilized races. Zendikari sphinxes can be found across the continents of Tazim and Sejiri, as well as the far-flung War Isle. These are mostly remote locations, inhospitable to the vast majority of creatures on Zendikar, which is why they are so desired by the sphinx. Like other races across the plains, Zendikari sphinxes seek out remote environs from which they can ponder Zendikar's mysteries and contemplate what they've learned on their journeys. The sphinx treats its knowledge much the same as a dragon treats its treasure hoard, and Zendikari sphinxes jealously protect their lairs, going to great and violent lengths to keep prying eyes and minds out, especially those of other sphinxes. Unlike some of the other races we've discussed, the Sphinxes of Zendikar don't look to one another as potential allies in search for greater understanding, but rather bitter opponents seeking to steal knowledge and treasures for themselves, making them cloistered and reclusive even for a Sphinx. Still, they are approached by all manner of other beings because of the knowledge and foresight they represent. Merfolk, 
Humans, Kor and others, often seek out the Sphinx, and those who can both find and reach a Sphinx's lair are most often rewarded with an audience to ask their most pointed questions. Sphinxes can be seen in the skies of Tazim, usually near the ocean which we can see in the title and art of the card Guardian of Tazim. This continent is massive, filled with untold treasure and deep secrets, temptation few Sphinxes can resist. Further inland, an unimaginably large waterfall plummets hundreds of feet, then continues on its course across Tazim. Magosi, the Water Vale, is a popular destination for many creatures of the plain, and the Sphinx is no different. We can see this in the card Sphinx of Magosi. Across the plain, to the farthest reaches, we come upon the frigid and inhospitable continent of Sujiri home to the merfolk and the ancient ruins of their once great civilization. We can find the most solitary sphinxes here, where the climate and geography dissuade even the most hardened adventurers. They survey the landscape, build their lairs, and contemplate for decades on the nature of the plain and its mysteries. This can be seen in the art and flavor text of the card Goliath Sphinx, who has taken up residence in the tundra of Sejiri. The text reads, He makes his home in the tallest mountain in Sejiri, where the vista is as endless as his patience. Finally, the Sphinx can be found flying around the mysterious War Isle, an island as enigmatic as they are and filled with as many secrets. The isle was formed thousands of years ago when a skyclave of the great Mackindy Core Empire collapsed and plummeted to the earth. Rumor has it that the war skyclave was brimming with expansive laboratories where magical and technological advancements were developed that would dazzle the minds of any contemporary civilization. Perhaps the Sphinxes are attracted to War Isle to plumb its ruins for such advancements, or perhaps they already have and now they are viciously defending their treasure. We see them depicted in cards like Sphinx of War Isle and War Isle Avenger. An interesting note is that all three of the locations discussed were attacked or destroyed by the Eldrazi during the events of Rise of the Eldrazi and Battle for Zendikar. Possibly coincidence, after all the Eldrazi destroyed much of the plane, but perhaps they sensed the knowledge and power of the Sphinx and sought to eradicate the species as quickly as possible. And now I'd like to turn our attention to a few planes where sphinxes are not as prominent, where they have minor roles in the stories that unfold, or seldom make an appearance in the open, or places where the sphinx are few in number. We'll begin with the metallic plane of Mirrodin. The artificial plane of Mirrodin was created as Argentum by Karn Silver Golem centuries ago. A place of mathematical symmetry and perfection, devoid of all life except for the Golem Watchers Karn created to act as wardens over the plane. But his perfect world was tainted by the glistening oil, the corruption of Phyrexia, and eventually its warden Memnarch went mad, attempting to harvest or recreate the power of the Planeswalker Spark. Like most other creatures on Mirrodin, the Sphinxes present aren't actually native to the plane, but rather kidnapped from their own planes by Memnarch's soul traps, hurtled across the blind eternities, and dragged to Mirrodin. The Sphinxes of Mirrodin are extremely rare. A widely held belief amongst the plane's inhabitants is that if seen, a Sphinx will disappear into the ether to avoid prying eyes. We can see this in the card Argent Sphinx, and in its activated ability, which allows it to blink out of existence. With the events of Scars of Mirrodin, the plane was corrupted and transformed by the relentless forces of Phyrexia. It ceased to be Mirrodin, and has instead become new Phyrexia. In the aftermath of the war, several Sphinxes were completed by Jin Gitaxius transformed into agents of the Praetor, seen in the card's Consecrated Sphinx 
and Chancellor of the Spires. Interestingly, unlike the Sphinxes of Esper, those on Mirrodin aren't artifact creatures, which is a surprise considering almost all life on the plane has some metal components. The plane of Theros is one of myth and mysticism, making Sphinxes a natural inclusion. Like many other races, Theron Sphinxes are enigmatic and stoic, primordial mysterious beings with ancient knowledge and abstract thought patterns layers deep. The flavor text of Sphinx Mindbreaker clues us in on how their minds work. It reads, Riddles draw you in, paradoxes hold you fast, and answers shatter your perceptions. As a plane of prophecy and legend, of destiny and heroism, it's fitting that Theron Sphinxes have a special talent for prognostication, for reading the threads of fate and weaving them into vibrant tapestries, portents of future events. We see this in the ability to scry on many of the Sphinx cards. This mechanic is in essence divination, or reading of the future from the present. Theron Sphinxes are often wholly consumed in their mission to learn the future before it unfolds. This comes to us in the flavor text of Witness of Tomorrows, which states, As the future slips its way into the present, it ceases to be my concern. A Sphinx of legendary ability named Metamai acts as a prophet for the city-state of Melitus, frequently flying down to the city to warn its citizens of coming disasters. This is beautifully illustrated in the Art of the Card Metamai's Prophecy. Like the Sphinxes on many other planes, the Theron race treasures a good riddle, seen in the flavor text of the card Sea God's Revenge. It reads, What has neither mouth nor throat, yet swallows captain, crew, and boat. Their messages are often told in riddles or in cryptic whispers. It's up to the listener to discern what truth hides beneath. The Plain of Vryn is one divided by bitter civil war, two sides vying for power over the enormous mage rings and the energy they harness. On one side sits the Empyrean League, whose elitists and military tacticians hold control of the core states in an iron grip. On the other sits the Trovian Separatists, a conglomeration of guerrillas and revolutionaries that seek to wrest control of vital energy from the authoritarian Empyrean League. Between them are many arbiters and delegates that wish to bring peace to the warring factions through mutually beneficial settlements. No arbiter is more famous than the High Arbiter and Sphinx Alhameret, the only known Sphinx on Vryn. Alhameret and his agents were mediaries between the two factions and tried to resolve the conflict. But a far deeper agenda was discovered by the young mind mage Jace Bellerin, a pupil and agent of Alhameret. Jace discovered that the Sphinx, a powerful telepath, was secretly playing the sides against one another, using his mental magic to cloud judgment and wipe memory, adding fuel to the growing unrest. Jace uncovers the truth, that Alhameret was responsible for instigating the conflict and propagating it. The Sphinx wished to maintain his position as High Arbiter and the power he had gathered indefinitely. We can hear this in the flavor text of Separatist Void Mage, where Alhameret states, As long as each side thinks it can win, the balance holds, and the mage rings stand. The Sphinx and Jace battled over weeks and months, each employing all manner of mental traps and spells. Eventually, Jace emerged victorious, wiping Alhameret's mind of the capacity to perform even the most basal functions like breathing, and shattering his own mind in the process, igniting Bellerin's latent planeswalker spark and hurtling him through the blind eternities. Alhameret's memory and knowledge are preserved in his legendary archive, a veritable trove of arcane knowledge and geopolitical insight worthy of a sphinx.
So ends our study in cunning. Cold and aloof, but with vast amounts of knowledge, the Sphinx will ever be sought by those with a desire to control their fate or future. They'll receive their wish, but only if they can answer an unsolvable riddle. Thanks for watching and listening to this video as we uncovered the secrets of Magic the Gathering Sphinxes. Leave a thumbs up if you liked the video, and be sure to subscribe for more lore content. And now I want to hear from you. Which plain sphinxes are your favorite? Which creature type would you like to see in the next study and entry? Let me know your thoughts as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. A special thanks to my Patreon supporters, and if you'd like to become one just click the link in the show notes. Shout out to Alex Joaquin for the intro and outro music. References used can be found in the description. Until next time, go forth and explore the world.